Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to give you my general thoughts on Season 2, 3, and 4 of Lawnmire on A&E and starting the Netflix seasons with Season 4 respectively. Bloody Jacob, for sexy, awesome, exclusive content. That sounds like a warning. It's an invitation. Yeah. So yeah, it's been some time since I've talked about Lawnmire. I reviewed season one a while ago, and I kind of went radio silent ever since then. Um, and not out of a uh, lack of interest, because as you can hopefully tell now, I've still been watching the show. I've now watched another uh, three seasons of the show. I'm currently in the middle of season five, actually. Um, and I just, you know, I'm not going to be able to go too in-depth with this, because that would obviously take a while. I have work in a little bit. Um, but I still want to give a bit of a, a catch-up with that, and forgive some of the boxes and bags and stuff in the background. I'm actually, uh, you know, moving within the next couple of weeks, so getting some stuff packed up. Um, which should hopefully uh, give me like a better background to uh, record videos, you know, once once that is actually done. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, not gonna be able to go too in depth with this, but I still want to give you guys touch base and give you guys my thoughts on uh, <clears throat> just how I've been feeling about the show. You know, watching the uh, you know another three seasons since I talked about the first, and overall, I am still really really enjoying it. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, of course, A&E, you know, they did the first three seasons, and they canceled it. Luckily, Netflix saved it, uh, which I am, you know, very glad about. Um, you know, then they had to run for uh, season four, or five, and finally six. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm still really enjoying the show. Uh, not really, you know, too many issues with it. Although I do have a, you know, some like nitpicks with uh, season four, I guess. Um, Overall, it's still on the right track. I'm really curious and eager to see where it's uh, leading in the sixth and final season. Again, I'm in the middle of season five right now. Um, you know, so I'm still really loving Robert Taylor's portrayal of Walter Longmire. I think, uh, I think, you know, you know, I've seen a lot of great TV performances over the years, and I think he's another one of those. Um, I think he's, you know, one of those all-time really great consistent portrayals of a character and you know just really uh doesn't feel like anyone else you know <clears throat> um and you know I, I i like season two i like season three um season four might have been my least favorite season so far although i loved how i love the first three episodes or so um <clears throat> uh, something we gotta talk about though is uh you know, fate that Branch Connolly met, you know, at the end of, uh, season three, and that would have been a hell of a place to leave off if, uh, Netflix never saved the show. Um, of course, being, you know, uh, shot and killed, shot in the face by his, uh, his father, of all people, Barlow, um, and then the, you know, investigation sort of, uh, you know, led for the first three or so episodes of, uh, season four, as uh, Barlow sort of goes into his own tailspin over what he did a bit, and of course Wald eventually, uh, you know, connecting the dots as he would, um, leading to a, ver a pretty satisfying, you know, confrontation between the two, and uh, basically Barlow instigating Wald to kill him, probably because he actually wanted to die at that point, but still doesn't take away any of the, any of the shit off of him for what he actually did, and. Uh, you know, a hell of an arc, you know, for Branch, actually, you know, getting obsessed with, uh, you know, David Ridges over, you know, who shot him near, near fatally, you know, um, 
you know, throughout season three and that sort of drive and branch uh, a little, a little crazy. Um, but apparently it really wasn't that crazy because David Richards was still alive this whole time. Um, although he went about things in a way he probably shouldn't have. And then by, towards the end of the season, it seems like Branch is actually, you know, coming back down to earth and, uh, he actually goes to talk to his father at the shooting range, you know, the, you know, they're throwing the, uh, targets out or shooting the targets out or whatever. Um, and showing that he still has respect for Walt because Branch is actually looking into his father and his connection to, uh, you know, what happened to Walt's wife and everything, which, you know, I, I obviously think is a good show of the respect that Branch still had for Walt. Even as far back as season one, Branch, you know, is hesitant to, uh, you know, run for sheriff at all because he still feels like there are, th there are things he could learn from Walt. Um, and of course things happened that drove it up a little bit more. Branch lost the election um, in season two and everything. Um, but, you know, he was still willing to work under him despite them, you know, colliding a bit. So you can tell Branch is actually on a path, probably to actually become a pretty, pretty damn good uh, deputy. Um, but of course, that's when he gets killed. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was a surprise. I mean, I'm not sure. I tried to read into it. I've I haven't seen any reasoning as to why they killed Branch off. Uh, you know, Bailey Chase. I haven't really seen anything he said about it. Um, no, not really much of the showrunners said. I don't know if it was his choice or that was how they planned on writing him off this whole time. Because I felt like the branch thing is going to be like a... Him and Walt were going to be like a thing throughout the show. Um, but I don't know. You know, uh, to maintain any sort of realism and danger in a, in a world of a show or a movie, you do got to care. You, you do got to kill characters off no matter how important they seem. Um, so I get it, but still surprising. And I do think the show took a bit of a, a dip after the branch investigation was over. Um, I don't know, I, I think Lou, Di Lou Diamond Phillips was really good. Um, you know, and I, I, I understand the whole Hector thing he's taking on, you know, in se kind of season four and you're know, going into season five now and such. Um, I don't know, I just don't find the uh, things on his end and some of the native stuff all that interesting. Um, so I think that takes up a bit too much time for me anyway, <laughs> I don't know. Um, so a lot of it was that about you know him being involved in helping this uh, you know young Indian woman who is uh, unfortunately raped, and I do think that storyline is pretty engaging though. Um, I, li I like how they they handled that one and how it resolved um, with the you know the woman in the in the woods and everything like that. I thought that was that was done pretty nicely. Um, but what I mean is that after like the branch investigation, I. I I don't know, I just didn't feel like the show had like a, as much of a larger direction anymore. Um, you know, especially after Walt had found out, you know, Barlow's, uh, you know, how personal he was. He had a hand in, you know, Walt's wife being killed, you know, not from the cancer, but of course, you know, the fact that she was murdered. And of course, Walt, of course, Walt, Walt had a hand in killing Barlow at that point, even though Barlow ended up stabbing himself to finish himself off. Um, you know, it's just, uh, so, so that part was mostly resolved, although I do think, you know, we, you know, Jacob Nighthorse had, you know, saw some hands and things, but that might be a bit of a different discussion. Um, so yeah, I just feel like the show lacked a larger overarching story, and I'm not really sure where, where they're going at this point. Don't get me wrong, I'm still enjoying the character dynamics and everything, and uh, whatever does come off, but I just, I don't know, it feels a little aimless at this point, I, I don't know. I know there's still a Jacob Knight horse thing and the, the uh, Malachi, but I don't know, that's, that's, a, that's a concern I have right now. Um, but you know, I still enjoyed season four nonetheless, so I'm probably enjoying season five more overall so far. <laughs> um, although I don't think they're really going to top the Branch, Barlow, and Walt thing. Um, I do like, uh, you know, Walt and Vic's, you know, building relationship. Um, People keep acknowledging that they obviously have, you know, feelings for each other, but they they haven't done anything about it. And uh, yes, I am shipping them if you want to say that. <laughs> um, I, I just appreciate how much time they're taking and uh, developing this, and uh, that I just they didn't just throw them into like random, you know, shock sex scene or something like that. You know, like the first season or two of the show. Um, uh, I like Ali Walker guest starring starting in season four. Um, it's a psychiatrist that you know, all had interest in, and uh, kind of going into season five at least a bit. 
Um, but you can tell, and everyone can tell, that they don't really feel for anyone else the way they feel for each other. I'm really, really simplifying that, making it sound stupid, but... I don't know, I think it's being really well handled, and I'm at least hoping they're together by the, by the final season. <laughs> Um, so I'm still really enjoying, uh, obviously, Katie Sackhoff and uh, the role of Vic. As long as I don't kill her off, I'm good. <laughs> um, and well, obviously, but the show is named Longmire, so... Well, it could be Katie still alive, but yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I also, uh, you know, her arc's pretty good. You know, I am enjoying, uh, you know, the actress's performance. I think she's really consistent as well. Everyone on the show is pretty damn good. Um, as well as, uh, you know, Ferg, you know, stepping up a bit and uh, how he's carrying himself and wanting to be taken more seriously and actually being a pretty capable and smart character. Um, whereas before, in the first season, he kind of came off more like a comic relief. So I think that's uh, even fleshed out or built up nicely. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's, uh, you know, plenty more I could talk about. Uh, another random note, I, I love the, uh, I think it was the season two premiere. We're all ended up going to like the snowy mountains, you know, after these criminals and such. I thought that was a really unique, uh, you know, contained episode there. Um, you know, just environmental hazard and everything. I kind of wanted to do something like that again. <laughs> um, but I know it'd probably be, uh, you know, too similar. I don't know. But yeah, overall, uh, despite my, you know, some issues here and there, I am still really, really enjoying Longmire. I'm happy I found yet another drama you know, to get into like this after you know finishing The Americans and everything else. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely let you guys know. Uh, I'll try to review season five and six by themselves. I just kind of wanted to catch up here. Um, so when I'm done with season five, I'll talk about that. And then of course when I'm done with the last season, season six, I will do the same. Uh, so let you guys talk about season two, three, and four of uh, Longmire. Um, how did the transition from uh, a and &E and Netflix go for you? Uh, overall, it feels like the same show. It doesn't feel like there's really much of a difference with Lucifer. It got a little bit more adult. Um, you know, I think the 10-episode count for Longmire, though, uh, fits. Uh, you know, I don't think it necessarily needed 13 episodes. So I think the 10-episode count going forward is a good thing. So yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and by all means, if you want to talk about more specifics within these seasons of the show, comment below and we can definitely discuss. And, uh, peace.